Right. Well, good morning. All right. So we're going to be speaking about data quality today. And part of our learning objectives for this seminar is to describe a quality system approach for assuring appropriate data quality. And we know that data quality has really been a significant issue and topic. The ICH E6 Revision 2 really speaks about data quality and the importance of ensuring that our data is appropriate for the analyses. We'll talk about data discrepancies as well, errors, outliers, and bias, and how to assess their importance. Describe how poor data quality may or may not impact study operations or analyses, and compare and contrast common approaches to discrepancy identification and resolution. So, data quality begins with the commitment of an organization's top management. And without basically that commitment to quality, we need to have ensure that we have the infrastructure and the necessary resources to conduct clinical trials. And I would expect that maybe some of you have been in environments where, let's say, your resources or staffing has been really reduced one way or another, or you're in a startup environment where you don't have a lot of people and all of a sudden the work is becoming quite intense. and we know that certain things can suffer, and some of those things that suffer is usually quality, and let's, we can't go into, let's say, quality of our own life in, in that type of environment. But we want to make sure that the things that we do don't compromise the quality that comes out of our, our clinical trials. And basically, the quality of the data is the responsibility of everyone that's conducting the trial from the upper management all the way to the study coordinator who enters the information in the ECRF and patients as well, although let's say their commitment to quality in the same aspect that we look at it may be a little bit different. And it also involves more than just compliance. We can be compliant, but it's more or less a dedication and looking at the reasons why we're collecting data, how we're collecting data, and the appropriate way that we can, uh, let's say, present those data at the end of the day. So when we look at the best practices, and a lot of this information may come from the Good Clinical Data Management Practices document that has been provided by the Society for Clinical Data Management. And uh, Ashley, I'm going to ask a question of you and your team. Number one, are you all data managers? or are you multiple disciplines attending today? That's my first question. We, Go ahead. We are a mixed group. So we've got um, data management represented. We've got our clinical operations as well as our regulatory team all on the line. Okay, excellent. So are any statisticians? Okay, yeah, we can't forget the statisticians. <laughs> That's right. Those are the guys that receive the data at the end of the day, and you have to make those numbers sing. So we have to make sure that we're giving you a good product at the end of the day. So we have then. Yes, absolutely. That's right. Uh, see, we used to say that statisticians breathe a different kind of air than the rest of us, but, you know, this is because you have the utmost standards in what you want to, to utilize when you're doing your analyses. So. When we look at, at that standpoint, we want to ensure that it, within our organization there's a quality policy. So since you are a, a uh, different discipline group, we have our quality management people in your group as well. And we have to make sure that that quality policy and we have that standard operating procedures, work instructions, et cetera, that upper management really has to support it. It has to come from the top down and that everyone who's conducting clinical trials understands the, the practices, understands the standard operating procedures, is trained appropriately. We want to use standardized or validated data collection and handling processes. So now, you know, we have evolved, and I've been in data management for a very long time, but we've evolved to looking at the utilization of standards, standards to collect the data, such as utilizing C dash case report form standards in how we display the data in CDISC or SDTM data, especially for submission, if we're going to go to any of the regulatory agencies to submit new drug application. So we want to use standardized or validated data collection 
and handling processes. In other words, we're going to do this the same way for every study that we do. The documentation is there. And we really want to have as few steps in data handling and data collection as possible. Because as you know, we used to say when we had paper case report forms, if we were collecting data and we collected the same data on let's say the, the five case report forms beyond that, every time they pick up a pen to put a number on a paper or something, there's a potential for error. So we really want to make sure that we have, and especially with EDC, we basically have the entry of data into the ECRF at the site. Hopefully they don't have too much trouble, let's say, transcribing the data into the ECRF, but we, we want to eliminate all of those iterations of potential sources of error. This is really, I call this my interesting bullet. This is a bullet where we might get a lot of pushback, but we want to collect only the data that are essential for the interpretation of trial results. And especially now with the E6 revision two, we want to have a risk-based approach in conducting our studies, in looking at risk mitigation and, and so on. But we want to ensure that we collect only that data. You know, I would expect since you are a very diverse group that you probably have heard, well, this data would be nice to have but we're not analyzing according to this statistical analysis plan, there's nothing going to happen to those data. So the nice to have data, may it be quote unquote nice to have for maybe the clinician to look at, but if it's in the database, if it's in the case report form, we may be required as data managers to actually have to apply processes to those data. 